Hi, I'm Callum from Town Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the 2021 Pythago Sea Line. So as we start the walk round, the first point you get to added addition by the customer is a gas barbecue point so that will use the bottle on board instead of carrying a spare and inside there's a red full front connection that you push in turn but you'll need some orange gas hosing and a jubilee clip to connect them all together and then connect it to your caddock or external barbecue got your fridge vent your vent for your heater so when operating on gas, which is a, it is a gas water heater and and space heater, make sure that this is always obstruction free, so it allows the fumes out. And then just behind the back wheel, you do have your mains connection point. So you hook the vehicle up, you get your hookup lead, lift the collar, lift the flap on the van, and hook the van up first then the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. Got your raised outlet just behind here as well so that'll be open from inside the van but you normally drive over the grid on the way out of your site and deposit your grey waste and make sure that this is 100% drained down in the winter because you wouldn't want the water to freeze. Using the Cathargo key you can open all your blocks on the outside of the vehicle. In here you've got your garage. So you've got a 350 kilogram payload in here. And then just behind this grid, if you lift this off, this is all your electric unit. So you've got your charger, your solar controller there, your mains trips so if the vehicle trips on mains electric try here before you try the site and then you've got your 12 volt fuses so you do need some 5 10s 15 20 and 25 amp fuses so just carry a few spares just in case one fuse does blow to replenish the fuse just pop your grill back on there like so and lock it into place put your own unwinding handle there and then in access to your fresh water tank should you ever need to take the cap off which is here put your carb mats and that's your garage in the back of the van you put your reversing camera at the top and your high level brake light smaller door for your garage so the bigger one being the other side you can still get access to your garage from here LPG so liquid petroleum gas this is your gas locker so here. on here you've got a slide out rack so if you lift this up you'll be able to slide the rack out and it means when putting two bottles on it's far easier so we've got our six kilogram test bottle on here and the first thing you do is strap the bottle in top and bottom then you just connect your pigtail, it's a left hand thread and then you want to nip it up and then you want to get yourself an adjustable wrench and just nip that up before you turn the bottle on at the top, press the green button to allow the gas through the crash valve, make sure that this yellow button on the regulator is pushed in which is another crash valve and you can connect two bottles together and it will tell you in the middle that green means you've got gas your gas bottle's either turned off or it has run out of gas and you need to swap it to the other bottle. And that will just go back in. But make sure you turn your gas off before you do start driving or safer. Fresh water intake, so this is where you need to carry a hose pipe and a hose pipe connection as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. You put your flat end of your hose pipe in there and fill until it either overflows or until you're happy you do have enough water which you can see your level on your control panel. Here you've got your cassette. So to get the cassette out, lift the orange handle, slide it out. You need to take your ventilation system off there. 
Then you can take the cassette to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside the toilet block. You'd remove the cap, press the button at the back and tip the cassette out. Once you've tipped it out, put some water in, give it a quick rinse, and then you would then put your chemical into here. So about 120 millilitres of either the blue or the green into here, and then it's good to go back into the vehicle, unless you're using the tablets, which is where you put a pint of water in, and then you drop a tablet down the toilet, which will break up into the liquid, and then just connect the ventilation system back up, and pop it back in. Got storage. Which is double floored, so you've got a storage hole there, but you can get storage in here with the light switch here, so it turns your light on just in the center there, so that you can see what you're pulling out and putting in. The diesel filler opens with the main ignition key, so you can fill with diesel fuel from here, and then because it's a new style diesel engine, it's got add blue. The Ad Blue is a 19 litre tank and on the full 19 litres it'll do five and a half thousand mile. So once it's done four and a half thousand mile and you've got 1500 miles left, you'll get the warning to top it up with Ad Blue. It'll come on between the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge. So simply pull into a petrol station that sells Ad Blue on the pump or you can buy it in the drums and you might want to carry one in the back and you can top the Ad Blue system up. Engine battery lives underneath the floor on the cab, so that's why you've got the cut out there to get access to the cab battery. Should you ever need to, we'll put a charger on. Underneath the passenger seat, you do have a tool kit, which includes a jack and a brace and a torn eye. And then your bonnet release, which is just in this corner here. So this lever here opens your bonnet. Got a lever at the top here that you just need to slide to take the second catch off. And you've got your screen wash here, which is the main one you're going to need. And then you do have your power steering fluid at the back, your coolant, and your brake fluid. These three here. Your oil filler and your oil dipstick for checking your levels. And then, should you ever need to jump start the van from underneath the engine bay. You'd put your positive terminal on here and you'd earth off just up here with an earth and bolt there for giving or receiving a jump start. Top rate the main 12 volt control panel. So if you are hooked up, you'll have this little green light here, which means you are receiving 230 volt. If not, it will just be the power that is in your 12 volt leisure battery. So you can turn the vehicle on and off here. So press and hold and turn it off. Turn it on. This is your 12 volt, which turns on and off your lights and your tw anything that runs off 12 volt on here. And then you've got your pump, which you'll need to have on to pressurize your taps, toilet and shower. Otherwise you'll just get whatever's left sitting in the lines and it'll fade away. Here you have a music icon. This turns on your Pioneer head unit in the front of the cab so it'll run off the leisure battery instead of having the ignition turned on and using the engine battery. And then these symbols down here correspond with these buttons on the bottom. So the first button you've got is a picture of a trailer. So this is your leisure battery reading. Take the hook about to get a true reading of your batteries as sometimes it can give you a false reading because the charger's turned on. Then you've got a picture of a truck which is the engine battery. And then wiggly lines which indicate water. Fresh water so you've got about 30-40 litres of fresh water in there at the moment. That's shown orange which means when that goes red it's time to refill the fresh water and then when the one below goes red the waste water is full and it needs to be opened. To operate your Truma Duo C so you can heat the regulator and the top setting in the winter 
or you can bring it down to the bottom setting and as long as that's shown green it means that you've got gas and gas is coming through should that show red it means that the gas is either low it's run out or it's turned off to operate your truma heating and hot water system it's this panel here so what you do is press and hold so do a long press and a long hold for the system to turn itself on and off and then to access the menu just press enter on the small little wheel here so you do have a picture of a motorhome with a thermometer in this is how hot you want the inside of your vehicle to be so you can have it all the way to the max which is 30 degrees or you can have it all the way to off if you didn't need the heating on so once you're happy with the temperature you just press enter to preset the thermostat to what you've chosen next you do have a thermometer in some water so this is how hot you want your water if you want your water on if you haven't got any water on board then have to have it turned off because you wouldn't want to break the system burn the element out so you'd have it on off if you had no water on board you can have it on eco which is 40 degrees of heating that 10 litre in your boiler or you can have it on hot which is 60 degrees of heating the 10 litres in your boiler so for this we'll just say hot it's gas only so you can't choose your source it's only gas and then you've got your fan so this is a 12 volt assisted fan so you might want it on eco which is slightly quieter and takes a smaller feed of 12 volt of the leisure battery or you want, might want it on high if you're sitting in a cold van obviously high you'll put it on max and it will distribute the heat throughout the vehicle In the bottom left hand corner you've got a timer so you can time it to come on and off just the one so you've got the main time displayed on the main control panel so when the clocks go back and forth you can adjust that and should you get a warning triangle in the middle you can go to the spanner setting which is where you can adjust the temperature the brightness the 12 or 24 hour of the clock the language or you can go all the way down to reset, you can press reset, press preset and it will completely restart this panel so you can go back in and select your temperature of your water and the temperature of your vehicle so underneath the hatch of the double floor as soon as you get into the vehicle you've got these two, these three items here so you've got your boiler drain so to drain your boiler down in the winter this is what's known as a Truma antifrost valve so at 3 degrees it will automatically drop the water which is where this blue button pops out and 10 litres of water will come draining out underneath the chassis but should you want to isolate it yourself if you turn the diamond from side to side to front to back the button will pop out you do that without the pump on and it will drain off all the water in the boiler and then to stop it when you come to reuse it what you'll need to do is turn the diamond back to side to side push the button in then you'll be able to pull the water through the hot and cold side of the tap on the hot side it'll take slightly longer it'll cough and splutter until you get a free flow of water from one tap then you do them all and then that is your boiler full of water this one just drains off your hot water lines so all the pipe work throughout the vehicle you would lift that up just to drain the warm water system off and then this one here is your waste so remember me talking about that pipe behind the back driver's wheel that's your waste so any water that you've used the shower water dishes water anything that you've drained off you would open the valve and that'll drain off the water before you leave your site remember in the winter that needs to be fully drained off along with the hot water system and then you would leave all your taps throughout the vehicle in the open position on the opposite side you've got your leisure battery isolation switch so if you stand in the vehicle up for more than two weeks it's recommended that you turn off the key so it's on one there turn it to zero and you can either remove the key or you can just leave the key in but that'll stop your leisure batteries from going flat when not in use but in the winter we still recommend that you charge your leisure batteries because the cold can sometimes drain the battery 
which means that when you charge the battery sometimes these new batteries won't take a charge which means then you will have to replenish the leisure battery which the leisure battery is just in the corner here you see the top of it just there that is your leisure battery location in the kitchen you've got three gas burner hub so you'll be able to light that there all three rings there's all three gas rings lit allow them to cool down so they're cool enough to touch before you put the glass hob tops down and then you put your storage drawers underneath with the large one at the bottom for your pots and your pans storage above and then your cutlery drawer with your gas isolation taps so does the hob the heater and water heater and the fridge these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced but if you have got any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe so to operate your, your Fedford Triplex oven and grill so first of all your grill is to the right and then use the ignition and your grill's lit and then to the left You've got your oven. Should you have turned the gas on, you may need to prime the lines because obviously the gas has been turned off. So either pull it through the hob, pull it through the oven, but it may take a couple of tries to get the oven and grill to light, which is fine because you're just pulling the gas through the empty lines until the gas is there and then it will light. So as this customer has fitted a external barbecue point, to turn the barbecue point on and off underneath the oven, there's a gas isolation valve which is where you can turn the valve to either give the barbecue point gas or you can isolate it so that no gas reaches that point. To operate your Dometic fridge with freezer compartment so to turn the fridge on and off it's just this one here on the left so you can turn it on and off via the power button and then A stands for automatic energy selection so it'll pick the best source available at any one time so we've got gas on but we're hooked up and the fridge knows not to waste gas so it goes to hook up if I was to take the hook about it would go to gas which will then self ignite or if I was to start the engine it will go to the 12 volt setting but the fridge has to be pre-chilled beforehand for this to work Otherwise, there's no, no benefit of putting the fridge on 12 volt if you haven't pre-chilled it before you've left. Either moving site to site or moving from home to your first site. It's best that you pre-chill the fridge a couple of days before, put your shopping in the night before, and then as long as you're traveling on automatic, it will switch over to 12 volt, or you can press the battery setting itself, and it will keep your shop nice and fresh until you arrive back on site. So underneath the floor, beside, the bathroom you do have your, fr your fresh at the back which is blue and your black tank which is your waste so should you need to get into your waste to clean it you can of course take this red cap off and put some cleaning solution down there and clean it out but make sure you put your cap back on and make sure it's tight and then behind you've got your fresh so if you want to clean that out again you can take your blue cap off You've got your little valve here, which is your fresh water drain dump. So should you have taken on contaminated water, you're not using the valve for a couple of weeks, or you're draining it down for the winter, you want to make sure all the water is out. All you need to do is turn this valve to the left-hand side, as far as it will open, and it will drain the water directly out underneath the vehicle. So at the back of the vehicle, you've got two single beds or if you want to make it into one big bed in the center slide this out first of all you'll get your ladder because obviously your steps then become blocked in so you pull this out and then you've got this cushion here which goes in
and creates a large double bed across the width of the vehicle instead of having two single beds front to back. So in the back cupboard, you've got a 230 volt isolation switch, which you need to turn this on for you then to operate the aircon, but I'm gonna send you a separate video on how the aircon works, the Truma Aventa air conditioning unit. So in the washroom, you've got your shower cubicle, which has just got a press done in the top corner, so then you can bring the shower screen round you when you're in the shower. But making sure that it's tied back before you do start traveling, because it'll keep it nice and secure and stop it rattling. And then it won't break your toilet. Press the blue button at the back, which is your fresh water flush. Always put a bit of water in the toilet first, which keeps the seal lubricated between the toilet and the blade. And then you want to open the blade, which is this grey lever. So push it away from you. Opens the blade. You can then use the toilet. Everything's going to go into the cassette. You can give it a flush after your use. If you're going to use any pink liquid, put it in a spray bottle and dilute it. Spray the bowl, flush, and then pull it back towards you, the grey handle, which will close the blade and isolate the cassette should you ever need to get it out when you need to change it. But you will get a light on here on the back. Underneath the diagram of the cassette, you'll get a red light, which means the cassette is now full and it needs to be taken out, emptied and topped up with chemical. Toilet roll holder underneath the sink. Got your lights for your washroom here. Turn the turnbuckle there. You can make your shower cable separate from the toilet. That just helps the from the toilet from harvesting water on the top and then you pull your screens round. But remember, when you winterize, it's always recommended that you unscrew your shower head from the hose and lie the hose in the tray with all the taps throughout the vehicle open just to stop any water from sitting in any pipelines and potentially freezing. So in the cupboard above your dinette in the lounge is where your TV is. So if you press this little button here on the bracket and slide it down, you've got your Alphatronics TV. You've got to make sure that the music icon on the control panel is turned on to send the power to the TV. And then all you need to do is light up blue, use your remote, turn it on. And then every time you move site, you'll have to retune it. So you want to hit the menu button and then go down and the first thing it says is auto tuning. Just press yes, select your country, UK, and it will do a search and find as many channels as it can, wherever you're located, and then you should have your telly. So to drop your cab seats for your bed to come down, on either side of the seat, on the outer side, you do have these black wheels. So if you turn that back, you'll be able to fold the backrest of the seat down, which will fold the seat down and then all you would do is press this button which is your catch and you can slide your bed down and then you would just push the bed back up until it clips back into place and make sure it's secure before you start traveling off. So your rear view monitor is located to the right of the driver so you can see the back of the vehicle at all times when driving forward as well as when you select reverse, which is lifting the collar, select reverse, and then the grid comes up, so you can see that the red is the back of the vehicle, and then it shows you in distance how far you've got until you are surrounded by something, so it gives you a measurement of how close you're going to get to something. Your automatic climate control works by pressing off, and then press off again, and it'll turn itself back on. You put your air conditioning button, you max the mist for the windscreen and the recirculation button, followed by the fan speed. So if you want the fans quieter or you want a bit more of the fans on, you can go plus and minus here and it'll go up the scale. And then you do have your distribution. So whether you want it to the windscreen, your face, all the footwells, which is all here. And then you do have your temperature adjustment on the left hand side.